Buddy, it's the top of the hour. That here, you know, around these parts, means that you've still got a little time to grab something to eat. I don't know, snackies? Something to drink? I don't know, booze? Uh, get yourself all comfy cozy. Share out the link with friends and family that aren't already in the stream. This is it, Benetti Show. We'll begin in about two and a half minutes.
everybody. It's 5.03 on a Sunday. That means it's time for the Suzette Vanetti Show. Welcome. It's January 31st. We made it through the first month of 2021, and that's great. So if you have any um, need to buy me a gift for Valentine's Day, you have two weeks, and I'm a size seven and a half in shoes. So make them cute. That's all. Um, welcome. Uh, to the only show hosted by a drag princess, because I don't know if anyone else goes by that. Um, before we start, a mention to two women who passed this week, Cicely Tyson and Cloris Leachman. Thank you both, Ms. Tyson, Ms. Tyson and Ms. Leachman, for all you did for us. Um, a 22-year-old Pennsylvania woman stole Pelo Nancy Pelosi's laptop. I just want to say, I know that I'm from Pennsylvania, and I know I look 22, it wasn't me. I just stole Nancy Pelosi's look for last week's drag brunch. Didn't steal a laptop. So don't come to my apartment looking for it. Uh, Dr. Fauci <clears throat> says double mask it up. Um, I've been telling my ex to uh, wear two masks also for being double faced. Um, so this is the same thing, right? Like wear a mask on each of your faces. I'm just kidding. I'm not that mean. Um, Janet Yellen, a woman. This is mostly news today. Like, the world's crazy. I don't have jokes about jokes because that's what's happening. People are jokes. Janet Yellen, a woman, was named Secretary of Treasury, the first woman to hold this position. General Lloyd Austin became the first black man to be named Defense Secretary of the United States. Conservatives are freaking out. But it's okay, conservatives. You might not believe this, but people other than straight white men can be better than straight white men at their job. Look how a diverse population of people uh, fleeced white hedge fund managers with the GameStop debacle. I'm just saying, stock in straight white men is kind of dropping. Natalie Sago and Jenna Schroeder made up two-thirds of the crew assigned to the Charlotte at Orlando NBA basketball game. Uh, the first time in NBA history that two women were assigned to work a regular season contest together. And guess what? The game was called great, just like normal. Stock in women is going up. Unfortunately, nobody actually watched the game because it was Charlotte at Orlando. Uh, ew. Texas teen Jackson Refit, <clears throat> 18, tipped off the FBI about his dad's participation in the Capitol riot. While his father faces charges for participating in the domestic terrorist attack, the younger Refit is now estranged from his mother and sisters as they're disgusted that he turned his father in. Uh, and his father said that his son is a traitor and traitors get shot. So there's a GoFundMe for this kid, and this is tragic. He turned his father in because he's a domestic terrorist and his family's disowning him. And you don't need the family, kid. You're better off. Democrats are pushing for a recurring $2,000 a month stimulus check. Um, guess who doesn't want that? Guess. Republicans. Are you surprised? No. Democratic Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez on Thursday accused Senator Ted Cruz of trying to get her killed during the January 6th terrorist attacks at the U.S. Capitol. Texas GOP Representative Chip Roy, who was formerly Cruz's chief of staff, called on Ocasio-Cortez to immediately apologize and retract her comments about his former boss calling it unacceptable behavior for a member of Congress to make this kind of, I don't even know this word, scurrilous charge against another member. So it seems like it's okay to these Republican representatives to stoke the fires of a domestic terror attack and try to get your constituents and followers to kill other members of Congress, but it's not okay if you're one of those members of Congress to call it out. This is weird. This is why we can't, I don't even know how to make a joke about that. Um, speaking of AOC, she also said that legitimate white supremacy sympathizers are amongst the House. And Marjorie Taylor Greene couldn't wait to prove her right by publicly claiming that the Jews, the Jewish people, people of Jewish religion, have a, a giant space laser that they shoot at the earth. Whatever that lady is um, on, we should all be so lucky. Just to prove that there is such a thing as shitty Canadians, Canadian casino executive Rodney Baker and his wife, Ekaterina Baker, an actor, were caught pretending to be local motel staff at a remote Yukon territory. They posed as the local motel employees to receive the vaccine when it was meant for the vulnerable and elderly indigenous residents of that region. The Canadian couple were so despicable in their ruse that Canadian authorities mistook them for Americans. Okay, got one joke in. 
In a follow-up to a joke last week about the cocaine hippos in Colombia, scientists are saying that hippos pooping in the water is bad for the environment. Scientists, I could have told you that. Duh. Pooping in water. <laughs> Unless it's a toilet, pooping in water is no good. So it makes the water bad. You didn't need to be a scientist to know that. That is the monologue, um, and it is a big wrestling day. So uh, we have no Clifton today, but that's okay. I'm sending him my love. He's going to come with some really hot tea next week. Uh, so don't worry. Hang tight. He'll be back. In the meantime, we're going to go with another one of my favorite people. Uh, he's a great follow. He's a great comic, and I love him dearly, and he's on 95% of these shows with me. Um, so please, give it up. For me and Dave. Hey. How are what you? What's going on, Suzette? Oh, tired. Yeah, no kidding. I I, I just realized, yeah, I, I was like, yeah, Clifton's not here today. And I a friend of mine mentioned today's Royal Rumble, uh, which is kind of, which is, you know, Royal Rumble used to, I remember when for Royal Rumble first was on, it was just a, um, it wasn't even a pay-per-view. It was a special event on the USA Network. Um uh, yeah, and they just they had their battle royal, whatever the fuck, and uh, and so it's funny. And then it's become since one of the more popular pay per views and all that stuff. And a friend of mine was asking if I was watching it. I'm like, I don't have the WWE network. Um, you know, it's uh, it's that's one of those networks I haven't asked anybody for a password for just because I you know I'm a I I am a fan from when I was a kid of wrestling, and then I got into I got into it again when I used to go smoke bong loads at my friend Mike's house and, uh, and he always had wrestling on. I'm like, why are we watching wrestling? What the fuck, man? We're, we're grown adults. This is, you know, this is kind of stupid. And after a while I came, I, I caught myself coming over and I'm like, Oh, Chris Jericho's back. And I realized I was paying attention. And, uh, and then I got into it kind of retroactively because of uh, ECW extreme championship wrestling. That's the kind of wrestling I would have enjoyed if I watched it in its heyday, which was like the late nineties, which was a time when I had the least amount of interest in wrestling. So what, um, what's the difference? If you don't mind me asking, I don't know much what, about what wrestling. Mean? What, what's, what do you mean? What's the difference? You said that that was the type of wrestling that you would have enjoyed. It, ECW extreme championship wrestling was a promotion out of, uh, out of like New Jersey. Uh, it was Northeast. It, it is, it lives up to its name. Very few things called itself extreme and like, you know, follow through. Well, they, uh, led by, I forget who the main money man was, but, um, there was this, there was a guy who basically funded it all. And then Paul Heyman is like the mastermind who joined him. He's an old wrestling, uh, uh, kind of mastermind. And he, uh, he came up with the idea of basically, uh, like creating wrestling. That was the equivalent of like what punk rock, uh, what Nirvana did for music, at the time and that was just to like uh to just make it uh like cool and edgy and all that shit at the time and for wrestling that just meant uh ex extreme violence it meant uh you know kind of uh, sexualizing it you know having they had a lot of a lot of women in there and then uh but they also had really high-end uh wrestling matches that were like technical matches they kind of like mirrored what they had in japan i learned about all this shit later because i you know my interest in wrestling primarily was in the 80s when i first watched it and it uh it was when i i tuned in on sunday and, and found nwa national national wrestling alliance and there was blood that's all i remember the whole the whole reason i got into wrestling was because a guy started bleeding after his head hit a hit a steel post oh i think um, i remember I knew wrestling saying was on but i didn't yeah. really I could tell they were like going through the mo it was like this uh you know it was like this choreographed uh athletic display like these guys were hurting i could tell they were hurting themselves but they also were like oh they're they're working together to do it because you don't just like you know you can I'm like at any time i'm like you could stop running into the ropes you know if like when they throw them into the ropes and like oh i just can't help myself i have to hit the rope and then i have to run back it's like no you can stop <laughs> like you don't have to you know, you don't have to, you, they, it's just really funny to watch it. It's like, you know, even as a child, I'm like, oh yeah, they're, they're doing this to put on a show. It's a, a fake fight, if you will. 
But um, but that guy was really bleeding. <laughs> right. You can't <laughs> oh, fake that. That was the reason why. That's what kept me watching. I'm like, that dude's really bleeding. Like, that's not fake blood. I watch enough horror movies to know that's that's real blood that he's bleeding. And uh, and that just caught my interest of like why these guys, you know, so I so I watched it more often that stuff and so uh uh and i got into the wwf stuff at the time and whatever and the personalities involved my favorite wrestlers were usually the ones that were funny uh you know randy macho man savage jake the snake uh rowdy rowdy piper um and then there were guys though that were funny in the ring with just their performances like adrian adonis was a guy that uh you know i think you should you should know about adrian adonis uh i think it was uh I think it was uh, adorable Adrian Adonis. Or I forget what his what his adjective was. Um, he was a dude who uh, was an amazing wrestler and was just flamboyantly like he basically was the epitome of kind of uh, I want to say brought the whole feminine gay energy angle. He was very he, he was all dolled up. He would always have like perfumes he was spraying. He uh, he he basically was. I don't know if he was actually gay or anything, but he he took the, that whole angle of a character, and um, because a lot of people knew in wrestling and all that that a lot of wrestlers are gay. Um, it's very closeted atmosphere in in that regard. It's more open now, and there's been a lot more. You know, like Clifton could give you a little background, I'm sure, on that shit. But I I was told this even as I had an interest when I was I was younger. Pat. Was it Pat Patterson? He was like, well, he just died recently, and he uh, he's one of the oldest WWE champs or WWF champs. He was the guy that lost the belt to Hulk Hogan uh, uh, before Hulk Hogan's huge rise to fame, and um, he was gay. And uh, so Adrian Adonis, though he he basically brought that whole angle of being a very uh, feminine character in the in the ring. And yet he was an amazing wrestler. He could he could take bumps and, and dish it out and all that. He for and he was not only that, he wasn't like physically he was an overweight dude that threw himself all over the place, could could he could wrestle long matches. He had uh it was incredible. Uh you don't see those types of guys today in wrestling. They all have to fit a certain everybody, everything today has to always uh fit the same boring looks like this and and has no personality type thing so it was so back then it was just like there were these extreme personalities that kind of that the and they all kind of formulated themselves on the independent circuit before they became anything uh, popular so ecw extreme championship wrestling they they kind of took that back to the to what i liked about it they had extreme matches they were bloody they had barbed wire matches they had ladder matches they had weapons all kinds of shit uh they had and then they had matches that were like these extreme technical wrestling matches that were really good and uh and then yeah and then they just had you know a bunch of bunch of it was it was again it was it was very punk rock in that regard in terms of wrestling and uh and they were kind of they were underdogs as well they ran promotions mostly in the northeast their fans are insane you know their fans would be like extreme northeast you know, just, you know, fucking crazy people. You don't even want, like the wrestlers would be like, yeah, you don't even, I don't, I don't even want to be around our fans. They're insane. Uh, they're like Slayer fans of wrestling. So, uh, and they, they're, they're nuts. But, um, and then they ran, they, of course, they ran the gamut because you, you do something like that. It can't last that long. Um, anything cool is not going to last long. And they ended up getting eventually bought out by WWE. Um, they were already, I think, doing business with them and stuff. And, uh, and then they eventually got absorbed. And they tried to recreate ECW within WWE, and that was a that was a, a feeble attempt. Um, but they kind of they kind of mirrored a lot of it in their promotion now NXT. That's kind of they kind of took a lot of what they learned from ECW and made NXT like a, a quality training ground for all of their wrestlers today. And actually, one of those one of their the women's champ right now um, Bailey, I think she's the women's WWE champ. She's from my town. She's from Newark out here. She used to be, uh, she used to train at the school here, big time wrestling. And my friends knew her and she still comes to visit when she rolls through. And, and, you know, it's funny if you, if you, when you look at her, if you saw her back then, she just looked like a girl next door who wrestled. Wouldn't think that like, oh yeah, she's going to be a champ. Um, you would not ever think that she would be where she's at today. So it's, it's a pretty incredible story, uh, her journey. 
And, um, and I, I think I just found out another wrestler that I saw wrestle Sarah Del Rey. She's uh, she's also like one of the trainers at NXT. So um, wrestling's kind of similar to comedy. It's like it's not a far cry from the bottom to the top type of thing. So, but uh, yeah, that's all I know. And so yeah, that's why Clifton is not here. He's watching Royal Rumble. <laughs> he is yeah. He was at brunch and he was like, I'm so glad I got to come to brunch and we'll miss the show. Oh, check this out. Um, there's somebody that comes, and you've been to brunch. Somebody um, that comes to brunch a lot, uh, this woman, a very nice woman, um, she found out about this show last week. And, mm -hmm. and I, I put in her phone, I put like how to find the old episodes so she could like watch them and see if she wants to like watch live maybe. And today, one week later, she was like, so I watched your show. And I was like, okay, cool. Um, what'd you think? She was like, well, I watched a, a couple episodes. And I was like, oh, okay. Um, great and she was like i watched all the way up until you had the drag queen with pink hair and i was like that that was that was last week's episode um are you telling me you watched all 40 episodes we've done in one week you've watched like 42 hour episodes and she said yeah and i said oh my god um but i will pass along she really likes you she really oh, likes the show um so if damaris is watching thank you oh yeah Man, what a binge. That's I know. Commitment right there. <laughs> Shit. I love Demars. I didn't know she loved me that much, but now I know. And she loves you too. That's that's wonderful to hear. And I I, I love her. Haven't even met her. Uh, yeah. You know, anybody that's it uh I don't know, this last week was uh I got to do an outdoor show on Friday that was uh pretty it was weird. It seemed like more uh it wasn't so much the show the show was fine, it was fun to do, but uh, but yeah, you can just tell people have been like itching to get out, um, which is, you know, I don't know if that's a good thing. Um, but, uh, but no, it's, I don't know. It's been one of these last weeks, uh, uh been enjoying the, I, I don't know lately. I just enjoy the week's shit show of news. Cause we had the, everybody became a, a financial expert, uh, over, over a dying company that was, that, that cracked me up. Uh, and then everybody was talking one of those things where all these people become experts on something way after the fact. So when people are talking, it's the same thing with like when Bitcoin happened, uh, you know, people get into something the mo like after it starts kind of moving and like, yeah, that's because there's people that are there kind of when it's when it's important to be there. And then there's people that are just getting all this shit way late. And I was, and I, I remember thinking, it's like, yeah, you don't, you know, it's best not to bet on a horse race once the race has started. Um, and it, cause that's just what it feels like every, every time these people like the, the, and then, uh, I got, you know, I got friends that are, what's going on with, I'm like, just uh, simple, like you don't know how to use Google. I always love when people ask on social media, namely on Facebook, they'll ask questions that are not only like easily Googleable and you'll probably get better information. But it just sounds like, hey, I just broke my arm. What should I do? You know, like shit like that. Like, yeah. like that, that you kind of have like, I, I'm going to go to a fucking doctor. Like, who do you think's going to uh, put some, put some, you know, put some ca cannabis oil on it, which I have done, by the way. I've broken my arm and didn't want to go to the doctor and I put cannabis oil on it and it healed fine. Um, but I'm just saying that that's, that's just kind of the mentality. I've seen, I've seen somebody post, uh, what was it? There was something just, I mean, they were just asking a level of advice. And I'm like, where do you think in your Facebook friends? Okay, if you got you got Facebook friends and if you got some pretty important, you know, trying to, it's one thing if you're looking for references, like, hey, I need a new garage. Like anybody know a good garage door guy or, hey, I need, you know, my car is messed up, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But if you have like a, a I want to say like anything that's more than a paragraph of information that you're looking for advice, probably your Facebook friends list is not probably going to provide you with what you're looking for. And, uh, you may want to kind of do a little more due diligence and in, in figuring it out. Granted asking if, you know, if you have a broken arm, it just seems like that's the kind of question. It's like stuff, stuff that's like kind of important. Like, Hey, I'm just about to perform my first open heart surgery. Any suggestions from the, uh, the peanut gallery, you know, just like that kind of thing. It, it, it just these are not experts these are your friends your neighbors your family estranged people uh you know some some bots that are trying to sell you bitcoin that kind of shit and they're all like who where do you think the good advice is going to come from I, I don't think anybody 
has ever, you know, been in a situation where like we were in a burning car and we didn't know what to do. And I posted it on Facebook. And uh, thanks to thanks to Sam, uh, Sam Weber in Santa Cruz, going to put a specific guy. Uh, he suggested not only that we get out of the car, but that we run. And uh, thanks to him, we got out of the car and we ran and and we're, we're safe now. And, you know, now we're in a in a burning home, which what, we don't know what to do next. And it's just it's just one of those things where just people just common sense eludes everybody. It's like, first, let me post it on social media and figure out what I should do. And um, I don't know. I just think it's stupid. But I think a lot of things are stupid. I like um, when stupid. when they ask the score to a game or the time. Um, uh-huh. like you said easily Googleable things. I like yeah. I like when people on fa- on Facebook and social media say like what's the score of like whatever games at like the Super Bowls next Sunday like yeah. what's the sc- like you can just look up the score or they'll say like what time is it and it's like there's a clock I, I get that I get that though it's more like they want to have the feeling of connection of communication mm-hmm. rather but it's I always just say those are like the posts of the lonely I've I have a friend he's a he's kind of a comedian his name's Luke Newman. Uh, I don't recommend following him. I don't recommend adding him on Facebook. Uh, he's, he, but he's a funny dude to me. He's one of my friends, and and he's he's nut. I, I saw him on Friday actually, and anytime he's got more than two beers in him, he will not shut the fuck up. And and I'm a talker. I love to talk. And but when you're talking with somebody who's got a few beers in them, and he constantly is like, you know, hey hey, who who are your top five mm-hmm. rappers? Your top five rappers. I'm like, I don't even want to talk about my top five. Man, I don't want. I, I want to hear the top five ways you shut the fuck up. How about that? You know, and that's mm. he's just annoying uh, because he doesn't. He doesn't even really care about your top five rappers. He just wants to the feeling of a conversation. And I've been in these. I've been through all of those kinds of people at the bars and all my years of, of you know drugs and alcohol. And um, and I tolerated him then, but then when you're when you're sober, and not only that, you're like, it's like I like this guy. He's actually a cool dude. He can be funny sometimes, but you throw some beers in him, and he's just he just becomes annoying and obnoxious, and he he just wants to be a part of things. And I get that. That part is is easy. I'm like, there's a way to be a part of things, and why don't you just slow down, hot shot? Just take it easy. You know, you can have a conversation without having to. Force everybody to give you their five, you know, top rappers. And some other guy started talking to me that I, I didn't know. And I was like, hey, this guy was looking for top five rappers. Why don't you talk to him? So I found a good, like, got a good, uh, you know, like I used a human shield. When you get shot, I, like, grabbed somebody and had a human shield of conversation. So you you also did a mitzvah. Me. You did a nice thing. for You connected two people because um, you wanted uh, yeah, you so. wanted no part of that. So you made. Not you, at all. You match no. made. So. I'll mention one other thing because I know we talked this, uh, the WandaVision, mm-hmm. uh, you know, spoiler about WandaVision. Uh, it's actually good this week. So uh, you can you can enjoy it this week because even I don't know, you can enjoy it. The previous ones, if you're into the what they were, their slow build that was boring as fuck for two weeks and then an almost interesting episode last week. Um, but, uh, but it's nice cause this one was the week where they just basically kind of explained what was going on and took a long way to get this week. And again, this would have been a lot more enjoyable if it was last year, if it was the third release of Marvel, as opposed to the first release of this year, after all of the, the Marvel, you know, stalling and, uh, this just, you know, it wasn't the one to kick it off with, but I kind of get they just had to they had to retool. They're basically Stalin trying to figure out when they're going to put out Black Widow. And I just want to give a big shout out to HBO Max for just saying fuck it, taking the L and just putting all of their new releases streaming on HBO Max. Cuz I just watched that Little Things or whatever. It's a uh, it's a movie that I was half paying attention to and I'm going to watch it again. It's a cool thriller, all that shit. But they just they just said fuck, you know, we're going to put it in theaters that are open and we'll put it on HBO Max. And yeah, fuck it. They they got so much money that like you know these are people that don't you know that aren't like you know trying to trying to fight the the hedge fund people uh, with the GameStop driving up the GameStop stock. These are people that like literally own half of Wall Street. I'm sure because they got the entertainment world and they don't uh, they don't care about losing. Maybe they're writing it all off because they're putting out you know Kong versus Godzilla. They're putting out all kinds of shit. For literally, you know, uh, 
this year. And I'm looking for Many Saints of Newark. That's the the Sopranos movie prequel. That's gonna be cool. Like I just saw all the movies that are gonna be on. I'm like, I have, I wish Marvel would just say fuck it uh, for this year until the theaters open up and just put their fucking shit on Disney Plus. You know, even make people pay a little extra for it. I don't give a fuck. I'll do it. So why the fuck is somebody calling me on Messenger? I have no friends. All right. Um, so I got to go. Okay. But, uh, this is good. Thanks, Thank Dave. You. It's Thank always you. good to see you. Love you. you as well. <laughs> and I'll expect no money from the people. Good to see you, Chelsea. Robbie, have a good show. Right on. Folks, mean Dave. Um, you can follow him. You can send him some coin. He expects nothing. So now it means more if you give it. Um, do a mitzvah for the man who does mitzvahs. A matchmaker. Matchmaker. He made a match between two people. So that's worth it. Um, and with that, we're going to go with another one of my regular contributors um, and another special guest. Um, so if you're buckled in tight, I hope you are. Um, we're going to welcome back to the show, as we do every week, um, one of my favorite people and one of my favorite comics and someone I wish would adopt me because, like, look at me, look at her, look at me. I need her help. Um, so give it up for Chelsea Beers, and along with Chelsea, uh, give it up for Robbie Sandler, uh, of who wrote this shit. Um, he, uh, he's been on the show, so I'm excited to have them both. Hi! 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 How are you? Oh, man. Let's just take a second and give a huge, like, thumbs up, props, a uh, huge shout out to Jesse over there at STAB. Who's just yes. making magic happen? Je you just you, Suzette, are the most tragic human being, and you just throw shit at him uh, right at the last minute. Jesse, this is why I work with you on the Pictionary show, so you can deal with a fucking professional. Okay, so hello, hello, hello. How are we? Are we good? We're good. I like this hair. What's going on with this? You know, I wanted to get back to my Italian roots, so. Here we are. And into it. We logged in and I was like, oh, this is a vibe. I'm very here for her. Thank you. Yeah, I don't hate it. I don't hate it at all. Um, so Robbie and I just got off a show. <laughs> we did a show that uh, is New York based. Okay. So it was, it was an early one for me, uh, but it was on the East Coast and it's uh, a comedian named Brittany Brave. And she puts on an improvised tarot reading card with comedians. Isn't that a fun concept? Very. It was, it was the crazy. most fun. And people just like signed up and paid however many dollars to guarantee a reading. And they get comedians to try to do the reading with a couple cards. And then they bring on a real tarot reader to say, okay, they're funny, but here's the tea. Yeah. It's such a great, isn't it great? I think it's such a great concept. It's a phenomenal I a concept. I'm nervous to go into it, you know, because I don't know shit about tarot readings. Uh, but, I mean, it kind of turns into a light roast, you know? I mean, you just get yeah. them to the edge where they, like, want to start cutting themselves and you laugh about it. And then it's fine. It's very fun. Yeah, no. When you say a light roast, that sounds like a cooking thing for me. And my brain just got like fooded out again. Mm -hmm. yes. I, because, and I apologize for sidetracking. Speaking of Italian, Suzette, I'm currently staying with Italians. And with Italians on a Sunday, what time did we have dinner? I know the answer to this. Which, which dinner is the question? Okay. Sunday dinner. This is a no, I understand. sauce situation. Was it the first dinner or the second dinner? See? Solid question. It was the only dinner as served in this particular house. Hmm. On a Sunday. A Sunday. Well, then it was probably Italian. 3.30. It was still morning on this coast. Uh, dead ass. Dead ass. I was ass. called down for dinner at 2.55 and I was like, Chelsea, is it even afternoon right now? And the answer was no. And that's no. how you know I'm staying with the in-laws. Can I can I just get some props? Because 3.30 and 2.55, pretty, I, like, I was within a margin oh, yeah. of error. Yeah. No, I mean, here's the thing. I know my people. I walked in today and you said, boom, Italian roots. Mm -hmm. And your answer proved that you grew that hair. Mm-hmm. And you said sauce. 
did they call it gravy? Absolutely not. How dare you? <laughs> I will leave gravy. That's no, what we is the other kind of Italian. And this is classy Italian. Just ask them. It's sauce. It is not sauce. It is gravy. <laughs> are you from a gravy family? Is this the first time finding out about this, Suzanne? Are you are the Venetti's gravy people? We are gravy people. And just so everyone at home is watching, this doesn't mean that I'm putting brown like canned gravy oh. on my spaghetti. That's what we call our red sauce. I don't know. I'd have to say, looking at her lipstick application, I would just guess that she was from Gravy People. Is that bad? Is that, I mean, is that bad? It's right, right? Um, it's okay, right? Someone the, looked at my beat and said I was from Gravy People, I'd drop dead. <laughs> Some, somehow the light roast has transported from the tarot reading card here on the Suzette Venetti Show. I, no, Suzette, I'm yeah. going to say... A fi on what Chelsea has said. I am looking at the face of a truly sauced woman. Yes. Oh, shit. Yes, you are. Oh, and so compliment to both of you guys. I'm sure you heard me tell me and Dave, my friend Damaris that comes to brunch. She binged all 40 episodes. So Yeah, that's, we need to give a Wait. special shout out to that. Who? I don't even like being on this show. I can't imagine watching... 40 episodes back to back. Are you out of your fucking mind? That's a she's phenomenal. Shout out to you, sister. Wait, wow. hang on. No, this is a person who watched 40 consecutive hours of you, Suzette. Or well, not consecutive, but like 80. Because this show is usually 80. two hours. Okay. What? To which I say, that is two work weeks. That is someone <laughs> you owe. I love her. I am, and and so I made sure to find. I was like, okay, who'd you like? Did you like? Do you like Clifton? Cause Clifton was standing right there. We were at brunch, and she was like, oh my god, it's you. You're on the show. And he was like, yeah. And she was like, I love you. And I was like, and do you love me and Dave? And she was like, yes. I was like, do you love Chelsea? She was like, yes. I was like, do you love my interview guest? She was like, yes. I was like, what about the last guy, Shapiro? Do you? Like? And she was like, no. And I was like, me neither. So everyone but him. I that is so layered. That is like a Chelsea got cakes level cake. That is layered. <laughs> Maybe for episode like 100, we can do it. We can get a cake. Do you want a Suzette Vanetti cake for episode 100? You I mean, think you're going to get that far? That is adorable optimism. I, it's okay. Let's do it. You know what? I True life. I'm going to say... Chelsea, will you make a hundredth episode cake to celebrate Suzette's hundredth episode of this? Should we hit a hundred episodes? Yes, Robbie, let's do it. Well, okay, so here's the other thing. And and Robbie, you've never been to brunch, but Chelsea has. Um I mean, not with you, but I've been right, to you've brunch. Not been to, you've, been to, <laughs> <laughs> you've not been to my brunch. You've not been to makeup and mimosas. You've been to brunch the concept, the meal. Um, right. Well, like a normal human being, you've been to brunch. Sometimes I do ask, though, at the show, like, whose first brunch is it? And they'll raise, and I'll be like, wait, your first brunch or your first makeup and mimosa? And they're like, first brunch. And I'm like, oh, my God. Okay, child. do they mean, like, first brunch today, like, first dinner or second dinner? No, these 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 poor, poor souls, this is the first time they've ever experienced breakfast plus lunch equals brunch. Oh, wow. God. Being heterosexual sounds awful. <laughs> Anyhow, um... <laughs> Chelsea, I, I Clifton's not here. You're gonna have to take my word for it. I had a really good day. I'm really happy with everything I did today. And see, I think I secretly felt that, which is why I'm giving you so much fucking shade today. I'm just like, I'm filled <laughs> with it, girl. I don't even know. I just, I, I feel like an, I'm in a really good mood. Uh huh. I'm exhausted. Oh yeah. I, I'm, I'm one whiskey deep. Uh, I, I put on some purple lipstick and I feel sassy as fuck and you are in my tidal wave. Like, I'm not sorry. You know what? I, I'm, you can't, I'm not, I'm, I'm a buoy. I'm going to, I'm going to do this, but I'm going to pop right back up today. I, if you, I, I love that you are coming at this as a buoy I'm against a buoy. the roaring gush that I'm, is Chelsea Beer. I will, I will. It's not the first time I've been called a roaring gush. I'm just saying. I he will, was I, sexy. Okay. I will, I will buoy this gush um, because we are, we are, we are inch, inching incrementally closer to my drag mitzvah. I don't know if you and I have ever talked about it, Chelsea. Robbie, this no. is this is new for um, so. Yeah. Would that mean that you've done drag for twelve years and you're finally becoming a man? No, it it means that I get to be. A, I get to. I could. I could actually say I'm a drag queen instead of a drag princess. 
I mean, I'm always going to say princess because it's cuter. But um, our dear our dear mutual friend, Apple Adams, you guys, your friend, my friend. She will be on Who Wrote This Shit tomorrow. Okay. Yes. Um, and if you're not watching Who Wrote This Shit, um, go back and check because Suzette was on one of our episodes. And you have to watch all of them back to back to back uh, until you find her episode. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, you know what? Honestly, it's a fun binge, but enough about us, Suzette, you were saying. Well, yes, where can ahead. people watch your show? Um, go to WWTS Live, which stands for Who Wrote This Shit Live on Instagram. It'll link you to everything. WWTS Live! Tomorrow we will be live at 6 p.m. Pacific on Facebook, on Twitch, and on YouTube, and you can find all of our links on Instagram. And play along. Yeah. So go ahead. When are you gonna? How are you gonna become a, a drag queen? How how is this possible? Oh, I don't Very know. It's, person. Go it's, ahead. It's it's whenever it's whenever it's it's just whenever it happens, and then we have a drag mitzvah, and it's gonna be a party, and I don't know. It's gonna be the. So first. you're saying that you're not gonna be a full drag queen until Apple says that you are. Is Apple your drag mom? Apple is my drag aunt. Who's your drag mom? She has no say in this. You've met her actually. Animosity. I don't Taryn? know if you remember. No, oh. no animosity. Her name is Animosity. That's wonderful. <laughs> I don't remember her. Oh, no. Um, I, it was the show we did at Punchline, and uh, she was there. And she's a, okay. Jew, she's a Jewish drag queen. Um, she's my drag queen. Um, okay. And she's I mean, okay with this? She's on board? I'm sure. Okay. How do you spell Animosity? Because, honestly, that is someone who's getting an Instagram follow just on the drag name. Well, I don't nice. think she... Honestly, I don't think she has an Instagram. Um... A drag queen without an Instagram? Yeah, how I, is that possible? Oh, because she is the opposite of me. Like, I am an attention whore, and she is like, I don't need anyone's attention. Wow. I know. A shy one of my drag queen? One of my favorite drag queens um, was in brunch in New York at the at uh, Lips, at Lips Drag Brunch, and her name was Law and Order, and it was the one of the best names I've ever had in my life. I'm like, yes, bitch, I'm obsessed um, with you. So I am going to ask, looking at your feed, Suzette, this Anne is Anne Illusion. Is that the same person or a different person? That is a different person. Okay, well, I'm following Anne Illusion because that's still, <laughs> you know. You know, I, I wanted to follow a fucking drag queen, Suzette, and you were not giving me one. I almost said Suzanne. And so I followed the first Anne who you were following, and that's it. I'm going to tell people this is your drag mother. It is now canon. And I look forward to running into her at the drag mitzvah over my first brunch of whatever day. I would so love when is this? Out. When's this party? When is this? Um, well, we're getting closer because, like, look, this is not. I might be tragic, but you can't tell by looking at me anymore. Um. Maybe. <laughs> A girl can dream. Um, okay. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know when it is. It's it's whenever we get there. It's it's not you know. It's not like a regular bar mitzvah or bat mitzvah where you're twelve or thirteen, which is reversed, but thirteen or twelve. Um, it's just whenever I accomplish what I need to accomplish. Okay. Like, I've also got to ask structurally, like a bar mitzvah, bat mitzvah, what have you. Like it's a party, but the big event is you're reading from the Torah. So what are you going to read during your drag mitzvah? Is it just the audience? I, you know, I've I've Ooh. I've thought about this, and since this is the first one of its kind that I know of, um, I thought, do we read from Cosmo? But I like reading from reading the audience better. I well, then feel free to steal my joke and tell people it's yours. Right, no, or or bring it. your bring your drag friends up there and do a light roast and have a, just have a read. I think the that's how I think is open. Right, well, because that's how that's how and Robbie, as the resident Jew of the moment, you'll correct me if I'm wrong, but a, a bar or bat mitzvah, that's how it works. Your friends come up and they say a blessing before you read from the Torah. And then you. Yeah, read. that sounds about right. Okay, yeah. So it would be very appropriate for all of my drag family to come up, and Chelsea, um, and you, if you were over on the West Coast, and uh, the light roast to commence, and that would be the drag mitzvah. Mine would not be light. Mine would probably be a dark roast. Well, yeah, I mean, you're making um, you're making the cake, so you get to. That's what I would. I'm that, just yeah. No, I'm learning way more about. <laughs> Jewish culture than I ever thought that I would on the show. I'm learning so much. Right I, am. <laughs> I mean, Jews are very interesting. Just ask us. <laughs> yeah. 
Do you know that they don't like water, like cats? Or like the Wicked Witch, we actually melt under it. Yeah. That's Let's spread some lies about Jews, Suzette. <laughs> in this particular time in America, I think nothing could heal us better than lies about Jews. Jew lies, and, Jew lies, Jew and lies. And to be clear, I'm not saying this as one person. I'm saying this as part of the group that controls every dollar on earth. Oh, I get it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You're it's, welcome. Um, we have to go do promotional stuff for our show tomorrow. Okay. So uh, we're going to go. We uh, are so grateful that we could stop in and save your show, though. So you're welcome. Thank you Thanks, for coming, Jesse. Guys. We love you so much. Follow us on WWTS Live, you guys, and watch Who Wrote This Shit every Monday at 6 p.m. Pacific. Yes. Thanks. See you there. Come play. Thank Bye. You. Thank you both. Bye, love you. Bye. Mwah. Friends, Chelsea Beers, Robbie Sandler, please follow them. Watch their show, Who Wrote This Shit Live? And you can catch Chelsea on Drawing a Blank on Stab Comedy Theater, the Twitch for Stab Comedy Theater, on Wednesdays at 9? 6. Um, I don't know when they've decided. They were leaning towards like f- fourth Wednesday or last Wednesday, but it was, it was at 9. So I don't know. I'm going to have to talk to Chelsea and see when. Okay. Like the, the frequency of the show. I don't know. You can find the show on a Wednesday in the future at Stab Comedy Theater's Twitch, which is twitch.tv backslash Stab Comedy. Um, so I don't know where you're watching this, but wherever you're watching it, that's where you can find it. And it's going to be on a Wednesday. So you can follow Twitch's Instagram or Facebook to find out more. Um, the schedule's always posted. Jesse makes a really nice schedule. Um, or you could follow um, Chelsea. I'm sure she'll talk about it. And I'll have her on and we'll talk about it some more. And with that, we're going to get to my interview guest. Um, so excited to have him on. I'm going to read his intro here that I stole slash wrote. Um, okay, here we go. My interview guest tonight is a California native that has traveled the world, bringing hilarity and good vibes everywhere he goes. His wickedly funny stories and quick, sharp wit have earned him a five-star rating on Ticketmaster. He wrote this. I stole this part. I just combined. <laughs> I combined parts of different things that I read on the internet. And he is currently the cannabis expert on the Netflix hit show Cooking on High. He has performed in bars, nightclubs, comedy clubs, theaters, and festivals from the Bay Area to Berlin. He is a regular guest on all of Doug Benson's podcast and has worked with Dave Chappelle, Brian Posehn, and countless other comedians over the course of more than two decades as a professional touring comedian. He writes columns in the Sacramento News and Review and Cannabis Now. And just to round it out, he is a percussionist and a vocalist in the mo- for the most chill slack mob. And also... Wow. Yeah, this is the part I wrote. And also, um, the 1994 People's Choice Award winner for the International Jugglers Association Festival. Bees and booze, join me in welcoming to the show Ngayo Bilum. <laughs> it seems like I've done a lot. You have, oh my God. It's not you, bad, not bad. You have for done so much. You so are, much. You, are, are you tired? <laughs> <laughs> Constantly. But that, that's just the seasonal depression. That's not, it's not all the work. Well, welcome. We this, this we all. I think everybody on the show that I love has depression. So you're in great company. It's uh, it's the season. It's the time. Uh, you know, this pandemic does things. It my is. nihilism and wanderlust are at all time peaks right now. So um, what? Usually, you... I use my wanderlust to keep my nihilism in check, but uh, they're they're arguing right now. What What have you been up to during the pandemic? Fucking nothing. Just letting my house go to shit. <laughs> and that's okay, right? Like, no, I've been I've been producing the thing. I do a I do a monthly comedy show at nowheretime.com. We have we had a lot of good shows on that. And I, I have uh, I've been writing for Leafly uh, dot com and uh, I've been telling myself I'm gonna start a podcast, so eventually that will happen. And uh, I grew some weed, which I usually don't get to do because I'm gone most of the time, but I was actually home so I I put some plants in the garden. That was nice. I uh, I painted. I painted my uh, my back room. My mom died. I've been. Uh, there's been a lot. There's been a lot going on. Condolences. Oh, thanks. Yeah. It was in July, so. Well, still, it you know, does time have meaning right now? You know, it's uh, it's going to happen to us all eventually. It will. It will. Yeah. And and you you planted flowers, so it's there's a cycle element to it, I guess. The circle of life. 
Um, have you done, so you're doing online shows through Zoom? I've been doing online shows, yes. Okay. So when I have comedians on, we talk about, um, some comedians love Zoom shows, some of them mm. hate it, and some are indifferent. It's just the, what's, it's what's to eat right now and can't order anything else. Where would you say you are on that spectrum? Uh, I've been on some, some rough Zoom shows, but I've also been on some really, really good ones. Uh, the ones I do with NowhereComedyClub.com or NowhereTime.com, if you're into the whole brevity thing, um, they're they're really really good, and, and I'm not lying. Those are those are some of the funnest ones I do. The people at Nowhere do a good job of making sure you can hear the laughter, uh, but not be heckled too much. Um, it's you know it's it's comedy methadone, right? It's not the full heroin hit of dropping a monster punchline in front of 200 people on a Friday night and everybody gets the, oh, you get that, that rush, all those happy drugs shooting to your brain. But um, but it's it's still fun. It's still a good time, you know, and we need jokes more than ever right now, of course. So I'm happy to be of service. <laughs> I, I It sounds, that sounds really cool. I need to check it out. I am a failure that I haven't checked it out yet. Yeah, God damn it! I don't understand your problem. No, the next one we're doing is uh, February 20th. We do it on the 20th of every month. So it will be the 22420 Comedy Extravaganza. And in case anybody hasn't picked up on it, um, weed is kind of, uh, I would say it's a, a big part of your life. It is. It is a big part of my life. Uh, it just worked out that way. I just happened to like it a lot, and uh, it supported me through a lot of hard times. And, uh, and I, so I've tried to return the favor and support weed myself. So we work together. We've been married a while. I, I, was, I was bragging. I'm so excited to have you on the show. And I was bragging to, I don't know if you heard me talking to um, Chelsea and Robbie, my, my drag aunt, Apple Adams. And I was telling her that I have the coolest guest on today. And I said, and Guy Obilum. And um, I said he is a, a cannabis advocate and a comedian. And she said, isn't that all comedians? And I said, no, I mean yes, but no. Like this is well, this is serious. I think most comedians are cannabis enthusiasts or cannabis users, mm. but as far as cannabis advocates, there's really only a few. Like cats who are out there, you know, doing court support and going to well, shit. We did so many protests and so much court support and so many going to city council meetings and and border supervisor meetings and getting petitions and trying to get weed legalized in California and Oregon and Washington. I help with all three states, really. So, uh, you know, but I mean, definitely like just by smoking weed or being open about your cannabis consumption, you are doing advocacy, at least a small amount of ad advocacy. Uh, but, you know, you can always do more. We can always use more advocates and, and pro activists right sure like alice walker who says uh activism is the rent i pay to live on this planet so what makes comedians you said there are a few a few comedians out there that are advocates um what makes comedians good at being advocates for weed the legalization of wheat well one we're funny true messages are often always a little better with a, a bit of humor a spoonful of dick jokes help the medicine go down uh <laughs> Two, we travel around a lot and we meet a lot of different people and, and people who would ordinarily not be uh, exposed. So I've exposed my views and myself to people in Texas and Montana and Colorado and, and Reno. I got kicked out of Reno. I didn't get kicked out of Reno, but I was not invited back to the comedy club uh, in the 90s after pointing out that you could get hookers and booze all night, but weed was a felony. And now Vegas has legal cannabis, you know, 20 something years later. But, you know. I feel like I, I did my part for bringing it up. But are you mad about getting, like, I don't want to say kicked out because you weren't kicked out like you said, but are you mad about not being invited back to Reno? This is the price you pay. People discuss this all the time. Like, all these cats think that, you know, freedom of speech is my freedom of speech. That doesn't mean freedom of consequences. Yes. Right? Thank so you, when you speak you. up, people aren't going to like it. And a lot of people in power aren't going to like it. And they're going to tell you, you can't do this and you can't do that. There's a reason I'm self-employed. I can say what the fuck I want anytime, right? And, you know, as long as I know that there may be repercussions or what I say, you know. So I work on my diplomacy and my tact, but I also try to get my point across, man. And, and that's just how you have to live. And, but you have to be willing to accept that. 
right? So if you just think you can go around being a racist asshat and you're not going to lose your job, you, you're not really hip to the concept of freedom of speech. You just think you, know, you just want freedom from consequences. You don't actually want freedom of speech. What a, what a timely time to, for you to explain that. I, if, only, if only a large group of people in Washington, D.C. had been able to understand that two weeks ago, if, uh, if only, if only, if only, <laughs> uh, uh, listen, you can tell that they're new to activism and, uh, and, and protest actions because those guys operational security, their cultural security is terrible. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, but listen, they're also going to see what the big boot of the state does. <clears throat> These guys, I don't feel bad for them because they're racist asshats. And they tried to destroy this country that I love, even though it doesn't love me as much as I love it. Although not as much as L.A. doesn't love me. But uh, well, it's not that L.A. doesn't love me. I just want L.A. to accept me for who I am and not for who they want me to be. I think L.A. Um, owes that to you. Yeah. What's wrong? Like, <laughs> come on, L.A. What do you? What's, but no, we hang out. Look we at what's in front of access. you, L.A. Look at what's in front of you. Sorry, go on. Yeah. No. No. I, I'm with you on that. Um, so they're they're going to find out just how powerful the government is and i i, I think there there's going to be some 10-year day-for-day prison sentence surprises in a lot of these cats and i also think it's going to end up uh being way deeper than a lot of people think and i feel like there's uh some uh like klingon civil war action happening in the white house right now where they're trying to figure out like how much can we tell people because this might actually tear the country apart uh so, you know, Worf may have to con- continue being a pariah in order to keep the empire together. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. I know that's a weird analogy, but I'm serious. I'm serious. I, I feel it's like it's way deeper than people think. We usually do. Um, usually I'll, I'll, I'll do in my analogies from drag to comedy or comedy to drag. Sometimes we'll do Marvel. I think that's the first Star Trek an- analogy that we've had on the show. Well, so thank you. I'm glad I could help. You, you own that space. Um, I'm glad to break your Star Trek analogy, Cherry. Thank you. Um, uh, my pleasure. <laughs> Listen, a first for you. That's you know. I yeah, I know. I'm. <laughs> you've lived. You've done some things. You've had a life. I look 22, but I'm worn out. Um, I'm old and beat up. <laughs> um, so mm, beat interesting, up. interesting um, transitional here. You just mentioned the people that are facing consequences of the law for the first time, privileged white people. Um, and uh, I read that you said, it, it completely not related to this, but at one point you've written, um, quote, it occurs to me that in some places, um, the only thing cannabis can't do is keep you out of jail. I wrote that? Yes, you did. Hey, that's not bad. No, you've I'm wrote some cool things. I'm very proud of myself. I must have um, wrote that years ago. I forgot I said that. I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna give that one back. You should, yeah, totally. It, I. I found it for you. Um, so <laughs> send me the link. I will. Um, <laughs> I have to find it first, but I know I read it because I wrote it down. Uh, I didn't want to ask you the same questions you've been asked. And I could tell uh, when there was one that was particularly, um, I don't know if you were bored, um, but they were boring. And I was bored <laughs> from reading their questions. Um, so. But you wrote you wrote the only thing, and I don't. I think I think you might have came in a little bit late. We had Mean Dave. You know Mean Dave. I know Mean Dave. I love Mean Dave. He said um, he was talking about uh, he broke his arm once, and he put cannabis oil on it, and it healed just fine. Um, and I think that's what you were alluding to in the quote. Uh, marijuana, um, which by the way, really quick uh, side question: uh, you refer to it as all of the above, marijuana, weed, pot, hemp. Am I missing Can- any? Well, Cannabis? Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's all the same thing, right? I mean, language has power. I, I generally don't use the word marijuana uh, as much as I used to because uh, a lot of people that I love and respect have like, well, you know, that's kind of a, uh, the term they use to demonize it and to racialize it in the 30s when they made it illegal, oh. right? Instead of it being cannabis <clears throat> or sativa or indica, they started calling it, oh, this dangerous new drug, marijuana. Right, that was the whole thing when when uh, when they when prohibition became a thing in the '30s. It was uh, it makes Mexicans go crazy. It makes white women want to sleep with black jazz musicians. And these were why. And and first of all, uh, more of that then, and I should learn to play jazz. But also, uh, these, these were the things they used to demonize it and to make it illegal. And so, 
they, they try to get away from the word uh, marijuana. You know, the language has changed so much and, and it, it does have an effect. I mean, words are powerful, right? Names Indeed. are powerful. So we've gone from uh, marijuana dispensary to a medical cannabis dispensary or, or a pot club or weed club. It's a medical cannabis dispensary. It's not recreational use. It's adult use. Right? It's not smoking weed, it's getting medicated. It's not a joint, it's a pre-roll, right? So it's not like, hey man, let's get high, we're smoking a joint. I was like, hey, would you like to medicate? I have some pre-rolls. <laughs> okay, that answers one of the questions I wasn't going to ask, but I read you talking about pre-rolls, and I, I, I have a lot of friends, I haven't smoked much in my life, but I have a lot of friends that have smoked a lot. And mm -hmm. I was like, the fuck is a pre-roll? I have never, is, did, did spliff grow up and it's a pre -roll? what is it's a, a pre-rolled cannabis cigarette okay as um, opposed to a joint or a number or a doobie my mom used to call them doobies, doobies. right mom why yeah. do you call them doobies because you do be getting high son that's, <laughs> that's a that's a legit actual true story and she's not wrong that's the thing no. she's completely correct no my mom um, had good device good so advice. i've always called it weed or yes pot pot feels a little old like Pot feels a little 60s to me, like maybe sure. like when you might have said doobie. Um, but so anything we call it, we'll, we'll avoid marijuana because of the connotations. Um, but anything else is cool. I don't, I, I used to have a joke in my act, I sometimes still do when I remember it, about uh, how you could use any word you want. Uh, people know what you're talking about, especially if it's in context, right? If you're using the verb twist, hey man, twist up a scuff diffler. <laughs> right? People be like, that's cool. Where do you keep your skiftaciousness at? Right? People know exactly what you mean. So uh, I think one of my, my favorite, new favorite words for weed is uh, loud. The kids call it loud, right? You're smoking that loud uh, because the, the when you smell it, like it, if it's really good, stinky weed, it, it is kind of loud. It's uh, okay. You can, you can hear it from across the room. <laughs> you know what I mean? It gives you like synesthesia. You know, I'm not mad at that. No, it's a good phrase. <laughs> I don't agree with it, but I'm not mad about it. Um, I don't disagree with it either, I guess. So, um, speaking of the loud, uh, can we? I don't know if it's okay to just refer to it in general as loud. But speaking yes. speaking of the loud, it, it, you, what I what I think I, I was reading what you wrote. Loud is general. Gas is specific. Go ahead. Okay. Speaking of the weed, um, I think that you wrote you were saying like it can be used. To help someone sleep it can be used to help wounds heal it can be used to foster creativity or to um, soothe someone who might be feeling uh, emotional depression um, yes. seasonal depression anxiety um, so yes. I think I think that's what you were saying in that in that writing um, is that you can do anything but keep people out of jail um, which would you say that's if so you wrote it a while ago would you say it's still true it's still true listen Cannabis is very powerful. It can be very effective for a variety of different things. And we're just really scratching the surface and we're learning more and more, right? Before it was either sativas or indicas. And now we're like, no, 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 it's terpene. So do you want pinene? You want beta carophylline? You like it with limonene? You like it with, you know, this or that and that and this. Um, and it's the terpenes that really give you the different effects, right? Uh, we almost lost CBD because CBD isn't psychoactive in the same way that THC is, right? You can feel THC, you hit the joint, boom, you're high, you know the THC is taking effect, right? But if it's a high CBD joint, you don't really notice like, hey man, I feel less depressed or my knees don't hurt as much, and maybe at least for a minute. But as we started, you know, as the science nerds started to get more and more involved, especially as it became more legal and more accepted, then we learn all these new things. We learn about CBD, we learn about CBN, we learn about CBG, we learn about THC. And so there's so many different chemicals and compounds that can help so many people in so many different ways. And a lot of this isn't new, right? Like I remember being a kid in the 70s and fucking Jet Magazine was publishing uh, stories about how studies had shown that THC molecules killed cancer cells. Right? Okay, And that's the whole concept behind Rick Simpson oil is you just take giant mega doses of THC and hope they kill your cancer. And it works for quite a few people. It doesn't work for everybody, right? So don't just think that, oh, well, as soon as I get cancer, I'm just going to fucking go out and do all this Rick Simpson oil and be all right. It might not work for you. Well, right? not everything. things you can't cure. Not everything like, works for everybody. But it can help. Yeah. Huh? 
I said not everything works for everybody. So not everything works for everybody. Some people don't smoke weed or can't smoke weed. Mm. And that's okay. We'll get back to that because like I said, I'm not a big smoker, so I'm I'm interested to figure out why. You don't have to be. It's not weed isn't mandatory. Oh no, I know. I know. But I, I, mean, I for me it is. Right. And mandatory what, strong, necessary. I was gonna say, from what I've <laughs> read, because I even read where you explained to someone that if um how did you put it? Um, if you're basically, if your tolerance, tolerance has gotten too strong, lay off. Um, you and should you, tolerance breaks are a thing. You should definitely take a tolerance break. It's yeah. fun. It's and, and being a lightweight is so inexpensive. And that is the name of the game is how to do things without spending as much money. Right. We're in a pandemic, man. You got to have a budget. You lay <laughs> so, off the avocado toast, Tony. Yep. Lay off the avocado toast and the loud, <laughs> Although I still get my gas. Phil's coffee on the regular, so. You know, you can't it's give up coffee. You can't it's give up everything coffee. at once. No, no. Um, now, when it comes to all the things that can do weed, um, a lot of queens, uh, drag queens and drag performers that I know, kings included and in-betweens, and a lot of comedians that I work with indulge in weed before they perform. Mm -hmm. um, would you say it makes somebody a better performer? Better is a subjective word. I think if it helps you relax and be yourself on stage. I mean, a lot of people have anxiety about going on stage. That's why uh, more than a few cats like to have a couple drinks before they go on because it helps them relax and it lowers their inhibition a little bit. I don't get as high. I, I mean, I used to get regularly high before I went on stage. And the two times that I thought I was too high to go on stage, uh, I killed. I destroyed both nights. So, uh, but these days, I, I only get a little high or I don't really get high at all until after the show. And, and, and it's only for me, like no one else can tell, but when I'm on stage, I feel like maybe my thought processes are a little so like I'm not segueing into the next joke that I want or it takes me a minute to find the other joke. Uh, some of that is I'm just getting old. And some of that is, is, is weed affects me differently now that I'm older. Um, so, I mean, you know, when I was in a band, we used to get fucking faded before we went on stage, but it would increase our telepathy and help us as a group to, to create monstrous and epic jams that would uh, go uh, beautifully and wonderfully and logically into infinity. I think that sounds beautiful. And this was with most chill slack, slack mob? This was with most chill slack mob, yeah. Right on. Back in 1970, actually 2000, God, Jesus, like 2001, 2002. Okay, I mean, not that long ago. I think ago. we broke up like 15 years ago. But we're all still homies. Our group chats are hilarious. Too bad you can't be there. That, well, I'll take your word for it. I, I'll believe yeah. it. Just um, trust me. One could say you wouldn't need to use electronics if you were still using the telepathy. But, yeah. it's you know. Yeah. It's not true. everything lasts forever. Um, sh what was my next question? I'm, I'm forgetting. It's, I feel. Take your time. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, you forgot. It's like I'm a, I'm a walking contact buzz. A little bit. A little bit. A little I'm, bit. Just, I'm a little I'm, bit of a contact hop. I'm lost in, I'm lost in, the, in the loud gas thought. Um, <laughs> Maybe you don't want to tell people that you have loud gas. <laughs> Noted. Noted. <laughs> Uh, you may have just made it to my act, actually. I'm going to throw that into my next bid. We're going to talk about that. That's great. Honored. Thank you. I appreciate that. Absolutely. You you gave me something. I give you your quote and that, that yeah. faux pas of Got mine. that loud gas. Loud man. gas. Well, stay away from me. Um, <laughs> Go to the so, next room with that shit. So it can, it can affect performances for the better by lowering inhibitions and yes. making people comfortable. But it can also, I think you touched on, it can make a performance worse by kind of slowing down synapses, would you say? Yeah, yeah. It can also give you anxiety if you're too high too, right? You may be kind of worried about it. And if that first joke doesn't hit, like I, I, I used to do, uh, and I still regularly, well, not right now, because we're in a panorama, but when we weren't in a Pandalorian, I would produce the Occasional Cannabis Comedy Festival. Uh, that's the official title, the Occasional Cannabis Comedy Festival, because uh, we throw it, okay, it's not annual, it's, it's occasional. Um, wouldn't expect anything less one time one of my homies and we, and we throw them at like weed clubs or venues where you can just put a cloud in the air right yeah and uh, it can be a challenge if you, especially if you're not used to being high so uh, one of my homies showed up to do a set and uh, he got 
pretty high before the show, and uh, he was killing it. He was killing these stoners for the first 12 minutes of his 15-minute set, and then all of a sudden he realized he was killing and he was high, and then he kind of just melted down and, and lost them for the last three minutes. But when he was super present and in the moment and just vibing and being high and getting these jokes off, he was a monster. And then all it's like when you're juggling, like if you're juggling five balls and all of a sudden you start to think to yourself, oh shit, I'm juggling five balls. And that's when the whole pattern falls apart, right? But if you're just catch, throw, catch, throw, and you're staring at it, and you're enjoying it, and you got a rhythm, then you're into it. But once you start to think about, it's not Heisenbergian, really, but it is kind of that same concept. It's a very Zen thing. Once you're in the moment, you're in the flow, and you're not really noticing it, you're just doing the thing, that's a vibe, right? But sometimes if you're super conscious about it, you're going to get out of your rhythm, and you may not be able to get it back. I, I think a lot more of the viewers, I mean, I could be wrong. But I think a lot more of the viewers are going to relate to that being in the moment and then realizing how in the moment you are and freaking out about that than they are the five ball juggling. But you can also do it as a drag show. Like if you're a performer, there are times when you go on stage, right? And you're like, oh, yeah, man, I got this shit on lock. You're in the boom. The music's playing. Your lip sync is on fire. Your face is beat. And you have them in the palm of your hand. You know exactly what's going to happen, how it's going to go. Even if there's some minor hiccup, you're like, oh, yeah, I got that. That's smoothed out. Boom, 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 boom. Right? Mm -hmm. But then there's other times you get on stage, you're like, ah, not, I don't know. I can't feel it. I didn't hear the beat come in. I didn't do this. I missed this word. And you start dwelling. Oh, I missed that word. Then mm -hmm. you start dwelling. Oh, fuck, I missed that other word. And then all of a sudden, and, and, and it, it, the crowd can't always tell. Like that suit, I mean, there's going to be like three hypercritical people in the back who are super into it or always like, oh, you know, 9.79 or whatever. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But to you, you might feel it and it might get you out of your rhythm. But I, I know you're a professional performer, so you know how to power through. We've all had shows like that. But it's just, you know, it's a thing. I mean, full disclosure, and, and I'm honest about this on the show, because um, I only had, this is only my, today actually is my three year anniversary for performing for drag audiences. Um, and comedy's not much longer than that. So I'm getting to the point now where I'm learning to power through, but yeah. it, and, and I, I, I understood the comedy reference right away because I have been there where, um, maybe not where I was riding a high and then fell down, but just where I'm like, why isn't this working? I, like shoveling snow almost like I'm shoveling and it's still snowing and I'm not getting, <laughs> there's no progress. What's happening? Hello, uh, Sisyphus. Yeah, I want to move to, I want to move to San Diego. I don't want to shovel the snow anymore. Um, right, right, right. But yeah. The, but the best I, advice I ever got that from that was uh, from my uh, street performer mentor, the late, great Robert Butterfly Man Nelson. Mm -hmm. um, early in my career, I had had a bad street show and I was kind of dwelling on it. He was like, hey, and he had seen the show. And he's like, ah, first of all, it was rough. Secondly, Never let them get in the way of your good time, right? Dude, you're on stage. You're telling jokes, you're dancing, whatever it is. It's already groovy. Just have a good time. If it fucks up, it fucks up, but fuck up spectacularly or in a funny way or just don't, don't let those cats rattle you. Don't let them get to you, right? I believe the late, great Bernie Mac said it in one of his Def Jam sets. The thing was, he had done Def Jam and he hadn't done so well, right? He, he really, his jokes didn't really fly. So he came back, and the first words out of his mouth were, I ain't afraid of you motherfuckers, right? And that became the through line through his whole set. He'd tell a joke, and he'd be like, I ain't afraid of you motherfuckers. Hit it. The music would come on, and he'd stop. You don't understand. And yeah. then he'd tell another joke. I ain't afraid of you motherfuckers. Oh, he was so great. Right? Bernie Mac so was brilliant. so great. Brilliant. But that's um, the thing, man. Have fun. Get on the horse. Don't be afraid. You touched on something that I tell new performers, and, and again, I've not been performing that long, but the audience doesn't know what you're supposed to do Only right you know what you're supposed to do so the minute right. and that's i think that's where i can tie this together with your friend who was riding high and then realized it and then crashed is as long as you're having fun if you mess up it's jazz baby they might think you messed up on purpose hit that bad note again and do it that's what we used to say all the time when i was a jazz musician like mm -hmm. if you hit a wrong note hit fucking hit it again and yeah. hold it hold it longer let him know <laughs> hold that note and yep. then bend it back into some shit make, let him know you meant to do it make it so funky they're like okay now i kind of like it that's it that's it and and it, but the minute you the minute you show them that you messed up and you know it then then they will jump 
they, they lose will, confidence in you because yep. you've lost confidence in yourself. The thing, the thing about stand-up comedy, uh, in as a, maybe not as opposed, but as a performance medium, it is really so much about confidence. I mean, you have to you have to have a certain amount of, and it's funny because you know. Low self-esteem is what makes us hilarious, right? That's <laughs> what makes people... We really need people to like us. I, please, I need you to like me. Uh, however that presents itself. But you also need a, uh, a, a slightly healthy ego mm -hmm. and, a, and a fair amount of confidence to think that I could just go on this stage with just me and a fucking bar stool and a microphone and entertain 100 people for 40 minutes. Right? Yeah. Yep. Right. Entertain them. Entertain them so much they want to give me more money afterwards. Just, just right? a, they want to buy shit from me. So, what were the ingredients you mentioned? Uh, a healthy ego, um, low self esteem, and I'm going to add a dash of delusion. A dash of delusion. A dash and a of delusion. Whole lot of confidence. Yeah, and and a a pinch of funny. If you have a pinch of funny, that helps. <laughs> uh, you know, the lid fell off the sprinkler when they were dumping the funny in my bowl. But yes, you need at least a pinch. You need at least a pinch. <laughs> yeah, no, I was talking about myself. Um, <laughs> I, I pinch your funny. Oh, thank you. Um, uh, so another thing that you wrote um, or said, let me find it. Fuck, Here it fuck is. I feel like I'm on 60 Minutes. You're like so deep. This is your life. Well, I appreciate you. I appreciate I your diligence. Didn't want, didn't want to do a late, you know, we could we could just say like why did you start doing comedy when like what's your what's your favorite joke but like pfft, we're not here you're for like that. the drag queen terry gross you could be like very gross oh i'm glad that you're into naming drag queens because that comes I up do, later. i do like drag queen names actually that comes up later <laughs> oh but really quick let's let's keep a theme going sharon needles is one of my all-time favorite ones. and what was the one you said today uh what was what your your drag aunt oh apple adams no no the other one Oh, my mom, Animosity. Animosity. Yeah, that's my drag mom. And then my, I have drag family. Uh, oh, you'll like this, tearing through you. Tearing through you is pretty good too. Animosity is 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 well played. Actually. I, you know, I need to send this to her because she's getting a lot of love in this episode, um, and I love her. Uh, but let's we're gonna come back to naming because names it, have power. But really quick. Um, I do want to ask you, what was the last thi the last thing you ate, and your your or what is it? Your grandmother's name and the last thing you ate. Uh, so I had a uh, what are those little tiny oranges called? Uh, clementines. I had a clementine, and then what was the middle part? What's what uh, grandmother's first name? Vivian. So your drag name would be Vivian Clementine. Oh, that's not bad. That's not bad at all. That's not bad at all. I, I had a really good one last week. I had a drag queen guest, and her, her food grandmother name was uh, Eunice, uh, Eunice Pizza. Eunice Pizza? Mm -hmm. But mine, good sir, mine was Christina Taco. Ooh. I know. You could be Christy Taco. I'm like, I think I might have to change my name. <laughs> Crispy Taco. Crispy Taco. Yeah. That really sounds like a drag king name. In a drag queen name. My, I had a friend last night. I was talking to him, and he was um, uh, Dorothy S. Grape. <laughs> Dorothy Esprit? S. Grape, because he was sour. Dorothy S. Grape. Yeah, he I was guess. sour grapes. And I said, no, no, make it an S. Dorothy an S. S. Grape. <laughs> Dorothy S. Grape. Yeah. Or S. Grape Dorothy. Oh, that's good, right, too. Like F. Murray Abraham. That, that sounds like a, a, a very, uh, like a writer drag queen. S. Grape Dorothy? Mm -hmm. Yes, it does. Mm -hmm. um, the great S. Grape. So you you said uh, to make to I've managed to escrape by. You have you've escaped yes. escaped decently and um, escaped. <laughs> you said to be able to make a living while helping the world be a better place is a great gig. Um, it is. That's what you're supposed to do. Benjamin Franklin said, "Do well by doing good." So, what does it mean to you to be able to have this as a career? It means a lot, dog. I mean, I mean, you know, I probably would have been happy as a high school music teacher, although they're cutting all the music programs. That was the original plan, right? High school music teacher, community theater actor. Um, but this this gig, man, this this able to just tell jokes and travel around. I've seen so many countries and I've hung out with so many different people and 
And uh, I'm not afraid of small towns and rednecks. So I've been all through Montana and Wyoming, Colorado. I've seen some gorgeous spots. I've hung out with some people I never thought that I would ever hang out with. I mean, it's really, I couldn't have asked for anything better. Uh, and that's, you know, a lot of times people are like, well, you should do TV, you should do this, you should do that. I'm, I'm, I'm like, I should do TV, but only because it would make me more famous so I could travel around and tell jokes. Because that's really what I like to do. I like to travel around and tell jokes and smoke weed and sometimes get laid. And that's like it. That's like, if we were just, if you could do one thing for the rest of your life, what would you do? I'm fucking doing it. That's beautiful. <laughs> so, it's beautiful. It's hard work. And it's not nearly as lucrative as it used to be just because of how things go. Uh, but it's still, it's still, it's still lucrative and I, and I often get chances. And that's, you know, all you can ask for is a chance. But I think that's important to note that it's, it's hard work because I think a lot of people in, you know, I have one stiletto, six inch stiletto stripper. Let me, let me start over. I have one six inch stripper stiletto in the comedy world, one six inch stripper stiletto in the drag world. And I think a lot of people start these, 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 adventures in those worlds um just wanting fame for fame and yeah. i don't think that's the way to approach it yeah well you know people often people are often uh there's always that that old thing right well so you just get paid to talk for an hour or whatever mm -hmm. and i'm like no no i i talk for an hour for free you're paying me for coming up with shit to talk about you're paying me for wrangling all these comedy clubs and putting this tour together and getting to all these spots and coming to talk to you for an hour. It's the the jokes, I would stand on a rock and holler jokes in the middle of Times Square if that's all I could do, right? But all that other stuff, right? You gotta, it costs money. It costs gas to get to Colorado, right? I mean, I could hitchhike. Gas for your I'm car. Not, I'm not 23 anymore. We should specify. Really blow dudes. What? I said we should, now that we're talking about the other kind of gas, we should specify gas for your car. Gasoline. Yes. Gasoline, oh, not, yes. not uh, weed that smells like diesel. Right. Right. <laughs> um, yeah, no, it is a lot of work. And, and then you said another thing uh, that kind of is a, a loose theme on the show. Um, you would be doing it anyway. You'd be entertaining. You'd be telling jokes anyway. And I think that's I can't help it. That's that's a thing that I've noticed in the pandemic with performers, both in the drag world, the comedy world and otherwise even theater people. Um, you're doing it because you need to do it. It's 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 not pathological in a sad way. But it's no. it's how it's how you. There are days. There are days. <laughs> indeed, indeed. <laughs> um, I'm trying to have a serious discussion. <laughs> but but it's I it's mean, almost yeah. it's almost how you breathe. It's I mean yeah. at least for me, and I don't want to speak for you. But tell me if no, it no. is for you. It's 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 the need to I need to entertain because it's what's going to make me feel alive. It's uh, it's my thing, man. It's uh, it gives me joie de vie, right? It's, oh. it's, uh, it's, uh, yeah. There, there's probably a French or German phrase for it, but yeah, man. It's a way of life. It is the way. It's uh, like comedy dough, right? Like aikido or judo. It's comedy dough. It's the way mm -hmm. of comedy. The way that is that is how I walk. Well, I I hope that I could be as lucky as you too put the hard work in but to be able to live the dream and i hope anyone watching understands how much hard work it takes to get to that dream i'm um, sure you can because <clears throat> but it's it is it is a it is an arduous journey um what what's the thing that you've done to make the world a better place that you're most proud of well i've helped legalize weed all over this i mean i've done so much cannabis activism and uh my kids are cool and they're grown ish now and they're awesome. So I feel like they're gonna make the world a better place as well. Uh, I've helped people, people have helped me. I've just, you know, I've just traveled around being myself and and being cool and and chopping it up with cats and, and, and uh, exposing uh, different ways to other people and learning from other people. And these are, this is how we do it. We have to interact, we have to kick it. Uh, we can't always, and, and it's funny that I'm saying this because I'm so upset at a lot of things right now and I'm not nearly as open-minded towards certain people as I used to be. Uh, but they are still human beings and I still hold out hope that we can all work together, right? And that it's, a, it's way harder to do right now than it was, uh, say, four years ago. I really thought we lived in a different country four years ago, and then 
I was like, oh, no, whoops, I was wrong. Uh, no, I, I mean, I knew we lived in an interesting country, but... Uh, <laughs> no, I mean, I, I knew it wasn't they, they great. They definitely proved it. Right. They proved it. And I think, I think they've opened a lot of people's eyes who were like, oh, no, it's really not that bad. And they see like, oh, shit, it is that bad. And, and people have let it get that way. And yeah. So you really have to... Yeah, well, what did, the, what did Winston Churchill say? You can always expect America do, to do the right thing after it has tried everything else. <laughs> I didn't know that he said that, but that's not wrong. Um, yeah, just just to I, I don't I want to just in case anyone was watching, they're like Suzette, you awful person. I knew that the country needed to do some growing four years ago, but I thought like, okay, we're on our way, and then I was like, oh no, whoops, there's a lot more of this than. Um, it, where was this all hiding? Because I knew there was a lot, but I didn't know there was quite this much. So. Well, they were they were rightfully embarrassed to think that way, and people were shunned, and people were deplatformed, right? Even Reagan, who was very racist, at least disavowed the overt racists, right? Even McCain, who's got his own set of problems, disavowed these people. He would believe that even though these Democrats are way different in their approach, they still want what is best for the country. Trump proved that you could be super openly, ridiculously, crazily racist and win. And so that gave everybody who had these thoughts an excuse. When we talk about this freedom of consequence, we're like, oh, well, it's clearly if he's the leader, then we can follow that guy and we can just do whatever we want and be as racist as we want. There's not going to be any problems, which is clearly not how it works. They haven't really done all the research. But that was, that was, he showed them the template. And so cats thought they could just double down on it. And so now we have to fight back. Oh, and they're still doing it. There's the, the, the congresswoman who said um, that Jews have space lasers. Um, That's pretty cool. I'm going to ask my kids about that because they're Jewish. Maybe they'll sneak, sneak me the codes. Yeah, you should get yourself, you know, in on a space laser because if nothing else. I'm still waiting on my Soros check. Fuck a space laser. Get the Soros check and then. I'm telling you. Once, and book time on the space laser. Now once once you light your pre-roll with a space laser. <laughs> mind blown. Magnifying glass, solar bong heads, baby. Hey, there's no better out, way. Out of, out of the bong you made of snow. So you make a big snow bong and then you light it with your magnifying glass. And now you're like deep, deep in the all natural living. I don't know if I should call you the MacGyver of smoking in the snow or all stoners are macgyvers the the boy all scout smoked weed out of an apple or a pop can or a toilet paper tube or a tampon applicator whatever i feel like you know, th there should be a boy scouts for weed smokers and where you learn these special skills of smoking i should put snow. out the weed scouts handbook that's a good idea that's you a should. good concept i was going to write a book just like the cannabis advisor where i would just give people advice and all the stuff uh, and break it into into groups and, and things but uh, I think handbook. both of those would be good. Yeah. The Weed Scouts Handbook, right? How to how to light a joint if you don't have a lighter. How to make a pipe if you just have foil and masking tape. How to do that's that that you might be onto something. I'll give you a cut if I manage to sell it. Okay. <laughs> I mean, uh, it's gonna be a small cut. Don't get your hopes up. No, hey, look, I, any cut is. But I'm, it's pandemic. <laughs> do, any cut. You like good. them? You like them cut? I, I like <laughs> cut. Um, <laughs> I apologize. That was borderline uncalled for and yet mm. moderately humorous we're, we're in a, a panda show what did you say so you know there's a lot going panda, on panda 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 mm. panda show um no i i i i read your bio you heard you heard your bio you lived your bio um you've had a lot of successes so if you i think a weed scout handbook is a great idea and i think you could totally if if there's anything i know about can i is it okay to refer to weed smokers as stoners Yes. Okay. If there's any a badge of honor. If there's me, anything I know about stoners. Remember, listen. Sorry to interrupt. No, please. But I'm since Italian. You brought it up. Yeah. When people say stoners, stoners is not a pejorative, right? It's the stoners who got the shit legalized. It's the stoners who opened the cannabis clubs. It's the stoners who made it so you could smoke weed in Colorado and Idaho and fucking South Dakota, Massachusetts, Vermont, Washington, all these places, Arizona. It was the stoners. It was the stoners who started it all, right? It's the stoners who did it. So when people are like, oh, that's just some stoner bullshit, hey, the reason you don't get arrested when you buy a nickel bag at your local club is because of the stoners. So give a shout out to the stoners. Don't, don't fuck around. So yeah, I'm a stoner and proud of it. 
Absolutely. Please and continue. You you interrupt when you want. I'm Italian. I don't. I think I don't think you. Or you know I you did. Talk like this a little bit more. Uh, yeah, we I should I, be standing closer together. You just stand closer together. Interrupt. It's a way of life. That's how we communicate. That's we how I talk too. So I appreciate. It, yeah, it's it there. We don't. It's not like 1970 or 1790s warfare where like you take a turn and then I take a turn and then we reload slowly. It's, it's not a rap battle. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> this is way better than a rap battle. Um. So. <laughs> They should interrupt in rap battles. Thank you. I've never thought about that. I used to interrupt guys in rap battles all the time. They hated me for that. Go ahead. <laughs> um, so you mentioned the stoners, all the things they've done. You mentioned the war on weed um, and then and, and getting it legalized. Well, you didn't, say, you didn't say the phrase war on weed, but you mentioned that your proudest thing, um, in addition to your kids being pretty cool and groovy people, is get, helping weed be legalized so many places. And then all the stoners and all the hard work they've done. So I want to talk about the war on weed. Um, it is not over. Uh, no, but it's in Weed's a better start. In, in, oh, in go ahead. Many states. No, no. After you. Well, I was just going to say the war. On, it's it's in a better place than where it was when you joined uh, rank. If I, yes. I guess. Okay. Um, I signed up for the battle. How close is your side to winning? Hella close. Weed stays winning. Weed always wins, right? Education is always better than prohibition, except for like you know rape murder and yeah, child diddling yeah. you have to prohibit those things but you <laughs> right. should also educate people not to do it and make it so they don't have to do it indeed right but education is always when it comes to sex work when it comes to weed when it comes to personal vices education is always better than prohibition we it's not like we didn't have a chance to learn this with alcohol prohibition in the 1900s or whatnot and it took you know it only took like four years for people to figure that shit out but it took 80 years for cats to come around on weed prohibition, which is crazy to me. It never works, but it also wasn't just about the prohibition, right? It's about the fucking with the hippies in the 60s. Mm -hmm. It's about making sure black people and brown people go to jail at higher rates. It's about keeping the private prisons paid. And that's one of the reasons that I like cannabis activism so much is because you're, you're killing a lot of birds with one stoner, right? You're fucking with the private prisons. You're, you're, you know, helping the police be less racist, which is a tall order, but you're helping. And you're, you're creating more business opportunities. You're helping the state. You're doing this and that. And so you're making the world a better place, as you said. So I've always been a fan of that. And uh, I, th I think that that's important. But I think that legalized weed throughout the entire country is doable in the next four years. And I think international weed freedom, I mean, it's already coming around. Like Canada grows weed and they send it to Germany because Germany has medical cannabis, but they don't grow a lot of weed out there, right? So they send tons, tons, and, and the rules are very Byzantine. You have to have crazy insurance. Uh, I work for the International Cannabis Business Conferences sometimes. And so it, it always blows my mind the scale, how weed is really becoming not just a decentralized, low-key thing, but a giant fucking commodity. They grow tons in Canada and ship it to other countries. They grow tons in like Malta and some of these other states or, or countries. Their inter, their international rules on medical cannabis are evolving at the same time as rules in different. I mean, Spain is basically legalized weed. Switzerland's probably six years away. Germany's not very far behind that. Australia's working on it all the time. So it's, I mean, you could go to Uruguay right now and buy legal weed, right? To where? So Uruguay. Oh, okay. Si, claro. So uh, that would be the victory is, is legal legalizing weed everywhere. That's, that's the end. Letting game. people out of jail for weed crimes crimes yes. is the first victory yes right uh secondly uh decriminalizing at least i i like decriminalization a lot of ways because you can still i don't know i mean legalization is cool but you know of course that comes with its own set of problems right like even out here in sacramento where the city is doing pretty good on it but there's no there's no clubs in the county you can't go to citrus heights to buy weed the county supervisors won't let you do it right so you can't have any weed clubs in in, in, in some of these small towns outside. West Sac doesn't have any weed clubs, right? So mm. legalization, these cats, they, they uh, what do we call it? We call it prohibition through over-regulation. 
They're like, yeah, it's legal, but in order for you to open it up, you gotta have $10 million. You gotta do this, you gotta do that. And your doorman's gotta be left-handed and his birthday's gotta be on February 3rd and this and that and that and this and this. And so you can't, it's not even, uh, it doesn't even make sense for you even to try to put one in because you can't get around the rules, right? You, you, so, can, you can have a weed club, but it has to be run by animosity. It has to be. Well, that would be cool, though. I mean, she's pretty cool. Um, I mean, can she handle her business and her weed? Oh, no, she can handle her weed. Huh? She she had to be my drag mom, so she has really good tolerance. Um, <laughs> uh, so for, for people and drugs. Yes. Um I think you touched on something that I didn't even mean to for us to go, but it's it's something that I care a lot about, and it's it is it is um, the over uh, I, I you know I don't even know how to say this because I wasn't prepared to talk about it, but it's it's the over incarceration of uh, especially black men when it comes to um, petty petty weed charges. Yes. Yes, especially in states that are not on the West Coast. They'll throw you in jail. Nevada used to throw you in jail for 10 years on a seed. Right? And so, I mean, that's so that's something important. Uh, is, the Dakotas. Is yeah. It North Dakota, it's either North Dakota or South Dakota will try to get you, like, say you got busted with the pot brownie and you ate the brownie, right? Then mm-hmm. they would try to get you on internal possession. Like, well, you did possess that weed. It's just inside your system, right? So, like... <laughs> if you're just tripping balls, maybe you ate some mushrooms, you're just tripping balls in South Dakota, they'd be like, you're in possession of mushrooms. You're like, no, I'm on mushrooms. I don't possess them anymore. I'm yeah, I can't. I couldn't give them to you if I wanted to. I can't. It's not, it's not yeah. a possession. I mean, you can have them back, but I'd have to vomit in your car. Yeah, it won't look um, the same. <laughs> so, I, uh, I, think, I think private prisons are an atrocity. Yes. Right? Uh, private prison and, and private health care... You can't do that. You can't make that a for-profit proposition. If if you get paid every time somebody goes to jail, then it is in your best interest to find ways to put people in jail. And stoners are great prisoners. They're fucking quiet. They don't bother anybody. They weren't really doing anything wrong. So you've turned a completely beautiful, productive citizen into a fucking criminal so you can make money. That's not cool, right? And when it comes to healthcare, people will do anything they can to stay alive. They'll pay any price to stay alive. And you're the one out here fucking, well, we're going to raise the price of the insulin drug 600% because we know that you'll die without it. What kind of bullshit? What kind of people do that? Like, I don't even, I sometimes wish I could be a greedy asshole. I would have a much nicer car. But I can't even understand it, so. No, I don't I don't think you can. I think you're too good of a person. Um, I, I try. I, 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 I my think nihilism is fighting me right now. If it doesn't fucking matter, we might have, anyway, go ahead. Oh, you know, I just say I think you're not trying. I think you're succeeding. But so, so that would be part of of the war on weed is not just getting it legalized, but sort of we we can't we can't give those men and and women um, all the people we can't give them their time back their lives back, but we can get them out of jail for we can give them their freedom back exactly, and and that's a big step, and that's really. One of the most important things to me, like, uh, I have a lot of problems with the way California legalized cannabis. Uh, I think they could have made the taxes lower. I think they could have made the barrier to entry lower. I think they're doing a horrible job with the equity and making sure that the people who are most harmed are the people who have the best chance to be involved in a successful business operation. But I do like letting people out of jail. That is my first thing. And letting people out of jail and it not being a problem. I got to say, I was uh, sitting on K Street one day minding my own goddamn business, smoking a joint, and the sheriff, two sheriff's deputies walked by me and didn't say a damn thing. One of them even gave me a nod, like, hey, what's up? I was like, hey, what's up? And that was beautiful. I could feel my blood pressure getting lower as it happened, right? You don't have to worry about smelling like weed when the cops walk into the Starbucks you happen to be at, right? These are all nice things. These are all, and sometimes it's the little things, and these are the things that are important. That's... Okay, so this this kind of I, I have to compliment myself. We're just I, my segues are on point. Um, so they fed, are. Fe, thank you. So federally, uh, marijuana. Show your highlights. <laughs> mar- thank you. Uh, marijuana could. Uh, whoop, I'm sorry, I wrote that and I didn't take it out. I didn't edit myself. Whatever, Weed. bro. Be yourself. Thanks. Weed uh, could be legalized um, all over, and that would be the win. Um, yeah. 
but what can what is the next step and i think you already answered this so maybe this is a bad segue what's the next step in states like california and colorado and idaho and oregon and washington uh i was just talking about this on my show the other day or or some other thing or interview or some shit i did uh we need it to be way more like wine and beer so first of all we need micro weederies right we need it you know how you can go to the local microbrewery and mm-hmm. get the, the the beer they grow or the beer they make we need a micro weedery where you could just go to a local spot we got some yards and some shit in the back we grow super specific strains we're very much like this it's a very localized flavor right we also need international commerce I, you can buy French wine. You can buy Australian wine. How come I can't buy Moroccan hash? Right? How come I can't walk in the club and be like, first of all, I need some of that Spanish weed because the Barcelona's make shit that makes your heart race. Right? And I also need a half a gram of that Moroccan hash and give me some of that Tunisian shit. Now we're talking. Now we're in the mix. Right? Then you can have your giant weed competition. I can't wait to just throw giant. It's California versus Colorado, bitches. We're meeting in Nevada and we're going hard. That's the type of thing. That's the sort of shit that I want to see. And hopefully, I'll be around the, to produce some of the it. weed Super Bowl. Super Bowl. Mm. Indeed. I, surely, surely you've said that before, and other people have said that. Uh, I think it's an old rap lyric from <clears throat> my band way back. Okay, I, I, your band. That makes sense. I because I was gonna claim it just because no one else was. I was gonna I'm say sure you, you my my previous career. Anyway. Um, <laughs> it doesn't really matter. So. Uh, what can the what can the pot smoker at home do to help? Call your people. Talk to your supervisor. Talk to your city council member. Talk to your county supervisor. Talk to your congressional rep. Talk to your senator. Um, and, and and that's the thing. It is tough because in some places, if it gets known that you like a little weed on occasion or you think weed should be legal, they're gonna try to fuck with your job and we come to these consequences again. They're gonna try to take shit away from you that you like. You're all of a sudden under surveillance or you're a bad person just because you think people shouldn't go to jail for a goddamn plant. Uh, so do what you can, right? Support the people who are out there taking the risk, right? Support Americans for safe access, support normal, support uh, let freedom grow. Check out Let Freedom Grow. Uh, that's my homegirl, Steffi Landa. She's been, she did fed time for weed way back in the day. And she's been uh, doing prisoner support for 20 something years now. Uh, check out, so support, uh, let freedom grow. Support your local activists, right? Even if you can't, I mean, one time we were doing a protest outside the federal building in Sacramento and a lady walked up to us and she handed somebody a note. And it just said like, hey, I'm, I'm too scared to protest, but I would be out here with you guys. So I really appreciate you guys doing this for us and thank you so much and i didn't quite cry but i was definitely touched it had me i was a little verklempt it got me in the in the old chamber right there but uh so please please support we monetarily time send out flyers bump around some emails circulate a petition whatever you can do um it i it wouldn't take much for the biden administration to decriminalize weed federally right now you just have to tell the dea it's an executive order to say to the dea we're moving cannabis off the schedule of prohibited, uh, of dangerous drugs, right? Because right now cannabis is schedule one. So it's up there with heroin and LSD as no additional value and a high probability of addiction. And we know both of those things are wrong. So it shouldn't even be on the list. It's, it's higher than cocaine. Cocaine is like schedule two or schedule three and weed is schedule one. So this is not, this is bullshit. Well, that's, so that's silliness. Work on that. Uh, you know, and be patient, really. Like, if common sense and science were actually effective in creating policy, weed would have been legalized in 1992, and everybody would be wearing their masks, and we'd be through this pandemic right now. Hey, thank you so much for having me over. Yeah, absolutely. I'm wrapping it up. Absolutely. Um, I, I have some rapid-fire questions. We can skip most of Oh, them. yeah, rapid-fire. You want to do that? Oh, okay. quick. Um, rapid, right? Fire. Indeed. Walk-up song, if you're performing tonight. Uh, feeling myself, uh, Mac Dre, when the beat kicks in. Favorite recurring show to perform in? Recurring, uh, Nowhere Comedy Club. I do the uh, monthly show on the 20th of every month. Favorite venue to perform in? Ooh, that's tough. Can't really be rapid about that. Comedy Underground Seattle, Punchline Sacramento, Last Comedy Club Tucson. There's a lot. Uh, there's a lot there's a room in um fucking idaho falls it's been going for like 30 years on a random wednesday night 
And it is one of the funnest rooms. I played that room for like 20 something years and it is one of the funnest rooms in the country. Throckmorton Theater on Tuesdays. That's also a great room. That is a good one. And they pay well. I, w- I wish I knew. Um, uh, uh, what, who, who's your favorite comic? My favorite comic? Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, you froze. I don't know if you can hear me, Ngayo. Um You're frozen, uh, which isn't helping us be rapid with the questions. But if you come back, we can finish up. Um, and if not, uh, I've had a lot of fun. So I'm not mad if we have to end. Um, bummed, but not mad. And... It looks like um, we lost him. Oh. You back? Okay. Can you hear me? Uh, he's muted. Oh. There you go. My power just went out. So now I'm on my phone. Oh wow! I'm so sorry. Let's. That's why we'll, I look like this. We'll we'll wrap this up for you really quick so you can handle that. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna light a candle and masturbate. But go ahead. Uh, let's see. Um, let's skip a couple. Uh, Richard Pryor and Steve Martin, by the way. Steve Martin, that's a great answer. Um, Richard Pryor. What's your least favorite children's show? Caillou sucks ass. What's what's uh? Do you cook or bake? Both. Wild bait. Uh, DC or Marvel? Marvel. Well, wait. Uh, DC probably writes my favorite comic book books, but Marvel is my favorite movie universe. That's yeah. That's a good. That's fair. Um, do I don't know if you drink. Usually, this is a drinking question. If we're at the bar, after, if we're at the bar after a show and someone's buying a shots, what are we shooting? So let me just say, if, if we're at the bar after a show and someone's going to give us weed to smoke, what are we? What am I smoking with you? First of all, if I'm in some small-ass, rowdy-ass bar and I'm on stage, we're drinking tequila because that shit gets me fired up. Okay, okay. If I'm off stage or just lounging with some friends and we're having a casual drink at a bar somewhere, I drink whiskey, neat. Uh, also, uh, whatever weed you want to give me is fine with me. I'm down to try it. Okay. Um... And uh, I said that we were going to come back to naming. Uh, so um, there are drag queens named Indica Sativa, Laganja Estranja, Alaska Thunder. I love her. You love her? Um, we're, uh, we're, we're Twitter homies. Right on. Uh, you probably know Alaska Thunderfuck 5000. Yes. Um, so if you were going to name a drag queen off of a strain or weed culture, um, what would you name her? Um, Bubba Kush? <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's actually a weed strain called champagne too so that could actually work um also you could be wedding cake oh that's a good i found shablato and and we thought that was shablato is good too but you could spell it b-l-o-t-t-o yeah do you have a favorite drag queen uh you oh thank you do you do you happen to have a favorite drag king I don't know uh, too many drag kings offhand. I'm I'm sure I've met a couple, but I can't say that I have a favorite. I will have to find one and introduce you to a a good one. Um, Please do. Absolutely. Um, two more questions. Uh, do you think okay. I'm, Do you think I'm pretty? Yes. Thank you. Um, I have to hear pretty that weird. once a day. And then uh, last question. Once this is all over, there's a new normal, old normal, whatever kind of normal. What's the thing you're most excited to do? Uh, giant weed circles, comedy clubs, and threesomes. Okay. And Gaio, thank you so much for coming on. I had a blast. Always a few. Thank you so much. Let me know when it comes out. Absolutely. Oh, it's out. It's live. Oh, well, there it is then. I hope I didn't see anything weird. All right. I, We're not going to edit it. <laughs> I will send you, I will send you, you the link. So you can... Venmo. N-G-A-I-O-420. Cash app Venmo. N-G-A-I-O-420 on Yahoo for the PayPal. Uh, the Venmo is underneath your face right now. We display that. Um, so we got you covered, and uh, I'll send you, all you a five link. Thank you people who are watching this. I'll talk to you later. All right, thanks a lot. Right. Take care. Thanks. Yeah. All right, Bees and Booze and Guy Obilum. Um, really cool guy, really cool comic, uh, really cool uh, 
weed advocate and um, someone that I admire. So um, send him some coin, uh, support him in his quest to support you in in what you like to do if you like to smoke weed. Um, and uh, if, uh, yeah. Also, I should mention, support Stab Comedy Theater above my head. Um, still in a, a pandemic. And um, it doesn't hurt to support the arts. So do that too. With that, we're going to round out the show with our last uh, contributor of the day, always on Sundays, uh, producer, writer, actor, whatever he's doing. I don't know, uh, David Shapiro. So whenever he's ready, we'll bring him on. Hey, Suzette, how are you? Hey, David, how are you? Uh, I'm good, thank you. Thank you for asking. Uh, you know, I wanted to talk about um, the the Jewish uh, space laser of doom. Uh, a lot of people are calling it mm-hmm. the uh, mm-hmm. J- the Death Star of David, and they're saying that it goes, Jew, 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 Jew. Um, no, no. <laughs> sir. Uh, it's real. I just want to let everyone know it's real. What? Um, no, it's not real. What, it, what, what, what? Like, what is this? Okay. There's anti-Semitism. Like, ooh, I hate Jews because I don't understand uh, if they believe in God or not. Like, my ex-mother-in-law. She, my, my, my ex-wife and I had to sit down with her for, like, an hour and explain to her that Jews weren't Satanists. And we believe in God. In fact, the same God as Christianity... Uh, sort of different. I mean, because they have the whole triumphant, the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. We just have a uh, uh, Almighty Deity, but technically uh, same Deity, right? Like just a one, um, uh, 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 a singular God, um, uh, a you know, a one God religion. Um, so we had to explain to her this for like an hour, so she could tell her friends that they weren't coming to a satanic wedding. Now that's. That's anti-Semitism out of ignorance. It's also very ignorant to say that Jewish people have space lasers that they're shooting to create forest fires into California. Like, that's ignorant, right? Mm-hmm. But when you're, a, when, when you're a congressperson like Marjorie Taylor Green, Green Taylor, it doesn't matter because she's really, really, really dumb and anti-Semitic. Because, like, what? First of all, <clears throat> if we wanted to, Jewish people, the Israelis would be able to do it. Like, Mossad can do anything. They wouldn't do it because that's crazy. I'm just saying they could. Don't, so don't, don't tempt them, conservatives. Um, but also, we don't have that, because, what? What? Like, I don't even, I don't even understand. Like, and then, Democrats are like, she should be out of Congress. Yes, 100%. This person is crazy, um, anti-Semitic, and like I explained two weeks ago, if they come for the Jews, they come for the Jews, right? Like, if they come for me and my people, they're coming for all the people. So watch out, everyone else, because uh, they're in Congress now. Like, it's like AOC is right. Like, they are, they're not just sympathizers in Congress. They're in Congress. And, and like, ugh, mm, I'm glad we have the House. I'm glad we have the Senate. I'm glad we have the presidency. Um, we have our own little triumvirate right now. Uh, because, uh, like, if they were in charge of everything, I don't know what they'd do. Um, I think, I think they would try to round up all the Jews and, and, and tell us, ask us for, like, the keys to our giant space laser, our, our Death Star of David. Like, my, yeah, my mind is kablown. My head exploded, right? My head is exploded. Uh, a Homestar Runner reference uh, new homepage for the first time in 10, 15 years, I think. Um, can't remember. But my head has exploded uh, because like that level of ignorance and anti-Semitism, how do you get voted in? You get voted in by other anti-Semitic white supremacists voting you in. 
Um, I just... I don't... I don't know what to say other than it when when it's when something's that upsetting but it's also that hysterically funny there's a problem um it's cuz it's funny that she said that and she believes it but it's also like wildly offensive uh, I, I don't know. I, I got nothing else to say. Um, how'd you do with the power outage this past week? Oh, I was fine. I just cuddled yeah, with some okay. blankets. Well, uh, Eli and I um, spent seven hours in the car. Uh, it, it was warmer in the car than my, my apartment. We were very lucky, though. Uh, it was only seven hours, and we had half power in my apartment, uh, so we could um, come up. I could come up and use the bathroom. The fridge was uh, powered even though the kitchen was powered down, oven and microwave uh, and stove all powered down, but the fridge was working, so the food stayed good, we were warm in the car, um, seven hours isn't longer than, you know, we've done longer car trips, so we just sat in the car, um, and we were toasty, uh, so, um, yeah, uh, yeah, Jewish, Jewish space lasers, you're back, I don't, that. They're crazy. Yes. Anyhow, that's all I got. I'm I'm uh, I'm tired, and I'm gonna call it a, a night. Uh, but I'll tell you what. To combine my last couple weeks of segments, if I were to date anyone, and they said, "So you're Jewish? Um, do you have a giant space laser?" That would be the end of the date. Uh, that would be the end of the date. Well, what if it so, was like to be fun? Uh, that's it for me this oh, week, Suzette. Okay. Thanks for having me that's on. The answer. Um, I hope you have a good week uh, and enjoy enjoy the Super Bowl uh, preparations for the week. Are you rooting for either team? No. Okay. Yeah. No. Me neither. Really. Um, yeah. The Steelers I don't are care. out. Um, you have a show during the Super Bowl. I'll mm-hmm. watch you do your show. Mm, thanks. Uh, and uh, yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, talk to you next week. Yeah. All right. Take care. Okay, bye. bye. David Shapiro, everyone. Um, I didn't hate him so much today. Anyway, that was the show. Thank you to Mean Dave. Thank you to Chelsea Beers. Thank you to Robbie Sandler. Thank you to Ngaio Bilam. Thank you to Jesse. Thank you to Stab Comedy Theater. Um, and also, since we talked about him, thank you to Apple Adams, um, Taryn Through You, uh, Animosity, and uh, even Anna Illusion uh, was name dropped. So... Uh, have a good week, and we'll be back next week, 503 on February 7th, with Katana Ray. So I'll see you then. Um, be safe, and avoid being shot with a space laser. Bye. Your hot shit and who I love